Well, good afternoon. This is Hound Dog Steve coming to you on the most gorgeous Sunday afternoon. Uh, the air is dry, the sky is clear, uh, blue. It is about 22 degrees centigrade, uh, which is just an absolute perfect temperature for working. And uh, as uh, you'll see in a moment, I have been doing some work in the garden, some upgrading to the greenhouse. Uh, but um, yeah, let's, we're going to take a little tour and uh, we'll come back and I'm going to do a quick wrap up. Okie dokie. Here we go. Okay, let's take a little walk around the garden. Uh, this here is the score of the week. I found this on the side of the road. It had a big label on it that said free. Uh, that is probably about a $900 screen door. So I'm uh, fitting it to the greenhouse and believe it or not, it is only just a couple of inches wider than the actual doorway. What a score. Yeah, that's what we like to see. Work underway. And look at that little chippy going into the peanuts. Cheeky little devil. So I'm now having a tough time keeping up with the tomatoes. As you can see they're all starting to ripen up. And uh, I've been eating tomatoes like crazy and boy oh boy do they ever taste good. Uh, but uh, shortly, when these start to mature, or ripen, sorry, uh, I will be uh, doing down some tomatoes in um, some kind of a puree, uh, which I use as a base for soups. The peppers, of course, are going crazy now. I've been eating peppers off this for a while. These are uh, a sweet pepper, which I kind of like. And uh, here's some bell peppers under here. But again, all going crazy in this wonderful heat. Now I've uh, transplanted some strawberry plants uh, because I'm taking apart another raised bed and rebuilding it. And uh, these guys needed a home, so I picked the best of the bunch. And uh, I hope they like their new home. The grapevine is doing astoundingly well, but I, I don't think I'm going to get any uh, grapes off it this year. And I hope it doesn't die off like it did last year. Uh, this bed I have reseeded in beets, and uh, this bed I have reseeded in beans. There should be just about enough time, especially in the greenhouse, to get another crop of beans. Some people have been asking how my tomato worm is doing. Uh, now, two of them unfortunately died. Uh, I don't know whether it was lack of oxygen on my part, but anyway, I have one left, and uh, it is absolutely huge. I think it's getting ready to pupate, uh, but we will be keeping an eye on that, and uh, I hope to bring you actually a video of when it does start to pupate, and uh, then actually turn into a moth. But as I say, it's a, it really is a huge huge caterpillar. Anyway, I'm just keeping him under there and uh, I don't think he can climb up on the plastic because it's a little slippery and uh, I have a, a small twig ready to put in because uh, very shortly uh, he is going to be he, it, she, I have no idea what that gender is but um, yeah, uh, they're going to want a place to hang and uh, turn into a pupa. So there you go, I finally solved my uh, ground dog problem with a have a heart trap and now we're going to deal with a squirrel problem. I've changed the bait there's the black walnuts in there and um, hopefully we will be able to catch a couple of pesky squirrels but uh, yeah the uh, the hound dog was sent off to um, live in the country where he belongs and to leave my veggies alone. That scotch thistle is uh, still flowering but uh, yeah, I can't tell you how unbelievably dry it has been. It just it refuses to rain. We've had a couple of little rainfalls, uh, but that is about it. Uh, I am watering constantly right now. Um, but as you can see, I you know I just I can't water the lilacs and the bushes. Um, I'm watering the cherry tree and the raspberries. But um, yeah, limited water supplies. And as you can see, I'm right down. We're supposed to get some rain on Tuesday and I am hoping against hope that we're going to get 
at least a, an inch or an inch and a half of rain come down overnight. Now what I am amazed at is these sunflowers. Uh, I have not watered these sunflowers at all and yet they look just as right as rain. Uh, they've obviously tapped right down into the wood there and uh, drawing their moisture up that way. But uh, yeah, it's uh, incredible. And of course I love to see those pollinators coming into the sunflowers. Finally seeing a few honeybees. Uh, and this is what I particularly like about the sunflowers is that uh, not only do you help the pollinators but uh, in the fall uh, the seeds feed the birds. Uh, yes they have been watering the kale. Uh, yes the kale is coming back actually quite nicely after it was chewed down by the groundhog and that is the beauty of kale. Uh, this is the bed I'm going to be rebuilding. This is my asparagus bed and I don't think I'm going to put the strawberries back here and uh, it is just too wide, it is too rambling. Uh, the walkway here is not wide enough and so I am going to be bringing this quite a bit down so there's at least a two, two foot walkway. I figure you need at least 24 inches to be comfortable so that you can work and get the wheelbarrow down and that kind of stuff. And here we have a tower of morning glories. I just love morning glories. And actually I saw a hummer coming into these uh, morning glories uh, this morning. I was actually quite surprised at that, but uh, anyway, there you go. Morning glory. This is my uh, second crop of cilantro coming up. And I don't know if you can see those little green hairs coming out of the ground, but that's my second crop of dill weed. I love fresh dill. But uh, the mint, which is usually a hardy plant, is struggling like crazy. Uh, and of course, as I say, I just, I just can't afford to water everything in the garden right now. Uh, that's why the emphasis next year will be getting that well into commission. This is a mustard seed, hot mustard, treating that bed. And uh, I pulled the largest of my beets. And they are now being pickled in brine as we speak. I was over at a friend's this morning taking care of that. And now the uh, again the turnips and the leaves have come back quite nicely. The ground I got into here too and just chewed off a whole bunch. But uh, the raspberries are just about hanging on. And uh, I mean this is a testimony to hugel culture. I mean these these would actually be dead by now if it was just straight soil. But the hugel culture uh, deep down there's still moisture in that soil. As I mentioned, uh, you can see the dryness has been absolutely staggering. And you know, I uh, often remember from my childhood watching these National Geographic uh, special uh, documentaries, you know, in Africa and this kind of stuff. And uh, you know, you'd see some poor chap uh, hacking away in basically dust uh, to break it up and uh, putting corn or maize seed in and um, just hoping it's going to rain. No, no rain at all, no water. Uh, it's a two or three miles walk to bring back water and here he is trying to feed his family and uh, that's what it's reminding me of this year and so as I say the emphasis will be on getting this well back into commission so that I do have a constant supply of water for my garden. So I am assuming from the length of the dry spell that we've gone through, which uh, like I haven't seen in the last 27 years. We've always had some rain uh, in between these dry spells to at least keep things going. But uh, this is, we're now coming up on around about 10 or 11 weeks without any significant rain uh, in this area. And I'm sure it is localized where we actually sit in a basin uh, between two lakes and uh, that forms like a little microclime and so if you can imagine there is a, a pressure between those two banks of the lakes uh, and it's sort of like um, bread in a baking tin and of course when things come towards us and I've actually seen this happen uh, the clouds will actually separate and half will go south and half will go north 
uh, the little village next door to us, uh, just on the other side of the lake, uh, it probably gets three times the amount of rain that we get here in this village. And we're only separated by about 18 kilometers. Um, it's actually unbelievable that you can have such localized weather. And that is what we're going to have to contend with. Uh, you can see that it's uh, going to be one extreme after another. So, as I say, I'm assuming that these changes now are well underway and are just going to intensify uh, as we go further and further into the grand solar minimum. And now with that Chinese report uh, that I did in the, my climate report uh, the other day, uh, we're now looking 50 to 250 years out at a significantly cooler planet. And uh, that is a long time. So, in a way, I'm kind of glad that we've had a bit of a foretaste here because it's giving everyone an idea of what is upcoming and what we can expect in the future, just uh, more intense, and um, that you have to prepare for whatever is happening locally in your area. Uh, so, yes, it is important to take into account, you know, the bigger picture of weather patterns, but it is also extremely important to make a note of your localized conditions and um, I am actually going to be starting a weather diary uh, I should have started this years ago of course but um, you know I've got a pretty good memory so I tend to remember from year to year never saw a point but I think uh, as things are getting so disjointed uh, I'm going to start keeping a weather diary so I can tell a year from year the changes that have taken place uh, to take a note of the weather changes and to see just exactly how far out of kilter they are with uh, each year, year over year, and um, because I'm anticipating every year is going to be a whole new ball of wax. Okay, so take care of yourselves. Please prepare. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe below. And in the meantime, this is Hound Dog Steve wishing you a very pleasant afternoon, and we will talk very, very shortly. See you now. Take care. Bye.